Hey everybody, thanks for joining us. My name is Scott. I have three more movies for you. Let's get started. Anna is directed by Luc Bazan, and it is a movie that is clearly in Luc Bazan's wheelhouse. It is a spy movie with a female lead. He's made this movie a lot. Anna is atomic blonde. If you remove that show-stopping action sequence that made Atomic Blonde worth watching and then replaced the double switches with time shifting that leaves the audience unfulfilled. There's a way to do this type of movie. I don't think he landed on it. For me, spy thrillers are always at their best when they give you all the information up front. You've seen everything you need to see, but then the context changes throughout the film. This movie does not do that. This movie shows you a scene and then will go back at different points throughout the film and show you the two minutes before the scene happened or the two minutes after the scene happened to give you more context. It's kind of a cheap way of having reveals. One or two time shifts, okay, but this movie does it constantly. The lead performance is not strong, and it just leads this movie to not be memorable. Speaking of not memorable, keep watching! It stars Bella Thorne, and it says here that this movie had a budget of $5 million and only made $94,000 at the box office. That's not great. I have no idea how this movie cost $5 million, though. The movie is about a set of serial killers that set up, let's just say, a hundred cameras inside their victim's house and stream the kills on the internet. Something that's been done before. But this one, the hundreds of cameras include cameras that can't possibly exist but are perfectly placed to find the action. If the central part of this movie is that they're placing cameras in the house and then streaming, that part has to be believable. If not, just shoot the movie like a movie. Home invasion movies are scary. I've said before on the show that home invasion movies scare me. This one did not, though, because every move is telegraphed within the film, and the budget that these killers have to work with is jigsaw-level budget. What they pull off within this house is completely completely unbelievable. The acting is terrible. Everything about it's grating. It's bad. Speaking of bad, Pet Cemetery. This is the second version of the Stephen King novel of the same name. Plot is simple. Family moves to a new city in their backyard. Through a forest is a pet cemetery which has magical powers, mostly the power to bring things back to life. This movie wavers a little from the original that came out in the 1980s, but not so much that it makes itself necessary. The only thing I thought throughout the entire running time was, why does this movie need to exist? The original was perfectly fine. This one adds John Lithgow, who does good work here. John Lithgow always does good work, even in the worst movies. But this movie does not do enough better to justify its existence. And in some ways, it does things substantially worse. There are at least three jump scares in this movie that involve semis. Semis. Yeah, unnecessary. And that is it for this episode. That may be the fastest three reviews I've ever recorded. Have you guys seen any of these movies? What did you think? I will see you in comments. And I will see you on the next episode. Thank you for watching.